see him so much more confident as well this year since George Lancaster's come in and almost and almost give him that buffer. He seems to be an awful lot more relaxed in himself. I think he is more relaxed in himself, but he you know, he got the job early, which I think is great. And we seem to be very quick at slinging mud at saying, Oh no, that's too early, we need to get someone from overseas straight away. And it's quite funny because I think Stuart Lancaster in many respects, and I know he's under a fair amount of pressure at the moment, they're looking at Northampton are definitely looking at him and um uh, people are able to recognise the skills that he has. He was a guy who built up a team over a long period of time, got to know them at different age groups, suddenly he has them for England, and he's a really good coach in terms of that, and he likes coaching. I would have said I didn't know if Stuart Lancaster was a head coach, and he became the head coach of England, so he got that very early. And um, in terms of the technicality, like Leo was... I mean, I was in squads with Leo with, with, with Ireland a bit, and he didn't get picked that often. You know, he... I don't know how many caps he got as it was. No, there were pretty great guys ahead of him. But he was pure graft. And he, when he went back to, to, to Leicester, or came back from Leicester, he brought back that kind of nasty edge yeah. of the Johnston and um, the Cockrell and all that group. That was the way that they played. That was brilliant for Leinster at the time. We talked about Leinster's backs being flash and fantastic. He brought back that pure edge that was really needed. Um, and people often dismiss... Leo, but Leo, he's a pretty big brain. He's very, very capable. He understands the sense of it. Um, I think it's much better for him to have a really good coach with him. Mm. So he's almost like a director of rugby type role and um, and it's great and it suits him. And, I, and I, it was lovely to be able to see the recognition that Leinster had mm. to be able to put a, a serious senior coach in with him because it seems to be a really good blend. Well, I think it's a really was really clever because it was you know, in a sense, taking this on immediately. And it was very difficult after, you know, Matt O'Connor. And, and people absolutely rightly said that, that when Leo and Shane Jennings came back to Leicester, they brought back this ethic that there, that there wasn't there. But, you know, when, when Matt O'Connor was, was sort of replaced, I remember Port Slattery, who does the, sort of all the, the, the media communications for the IRFU, saying there was a really nasty social media campaign against sort of Matt O'Connor. So much the like these, you know, from an element of Leinster supporters who said, you know, we go to the RDS, we're going to win all the time, we want to be entertained, you know, that you wouldn't see in Munster or else, like the vast majority of Leinster supporters are, are, are very solid and genuine, but there was a sort of a nasty sort of element. And so Leo Wynn's kind of stepping in to take that. I mean, very early after just coming out of the dressing room, and it's very hard to sort of to make that, make, make, make that, make that transition and but you know he, he, he's such a decent guy that being asked he was naturally 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 say say left and you know when you look at what what what, what Ronagara has done successfully really successfully there's you know there's different ways of w ways of doing it but I think that bringing in Stuart Lancaster was 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 brilliant and he because he is an exceptional person he's an exceptional coach and and you know I think he and Leo and the rest of the, of the squad have, have, uh, have, you know, created a fantastic relationship, which has meant that the whole club is much stronger. They, they both seem to be without ego, yeah. which is very rare yeah. in, in either a CEO or in, in a head coach or a director of rugby roles. Usually <clears throat> somewhere along the lines, There'll be a power think, grab. there's a power grab and things get skewed and they seem to work beautifully together. I think it's a mark of, you know, testament to the character of both of them. Um, they, they're very, very respectful of each other's roles, responsibilities um, and, you know, it's, it's a big strength. It's Northampton this month. It could be somebody else next month. It, the brain that Lancaster has brought to Leinster, is it is he such an important figure already that if he was to go, if he was to be tempted back home, that it could derail everything they've achieved over the last six, eight months? I don't think it would derail it, but I actually don't think he'll go either. And I think, I think it would be pretty important for Leinster to hold on to him. Yeah. For Leinster perspective, I also think for Stuart Lancaster, um, like the level of vitriol that he got post-World yeah, yeah. um, Cup um, I think Leinster have been incredibly good for him. Let's not say this is he a one-way street. He can't forgotten about that either. No, yeah. no, and, and, he he and, he is a, and he's a loyalty. He's a loyalty freak. So um, mm. you know, I, he has to recognize. He does recognize what Leinster has done for him. And but he's in a sweet spot where he's actually able to work with a team that is on the up. You know, and with all the things we talked about earlier on, with the the talent pool that's at Leinster's disposal yep. and, and the pipeline that's coming down the line. Why would you want to be running away from that just to, you know, to go back to a dysfunctional club which Northampton is at the When moment. he said at the interview during the week when Johnny T T Sexton, you know, texted him and said, we really want you to come here. Is there anything that I can do? 
you know, after having gone through what he what he went through, you know, in the England sport, was, uh, was after the World Cup was really vicious for you know himself and his family. He said to have somebody of Johnny Sexton's stature and character saying, "We really want you to come to this club," and that, as you know, Keith said, was a, was a, was a major factor, and it's very important in hopefully he said, keeping him. He said um, during the week himself in the interview with Joe that. Um, it was one of the best pieces of a sporting advice or a management advice he ever received was from Wayne Bennett, the Australian. He's a legendary rugby league coach. And Wayne Bennett said, whatever your next move is after England, only go somewhere yeah. where you really want to go and where they really yeah. want you. And if there's any inkling that's not the case for both of you, don't do it. Because he was, like he said, he was dying on the inside. He'd been absolutely crucified um, on a national scale. And Leinster came along and the timing was really, really nice for both. But I, one of the one of the big positives, and I think I totally agree with Woody, what he was saying, that he would, he anticipates he'll stay. He's, he's very passionate about the style with which his team plays. And being comfortable in chaos is a phrase he uses. You don't get many coaches like that. And you, in the modern, even, even if you look at the likes of Joe, it, it's certainly on the outside, you might say Joe likes to control almost every aspect of play. Mm. Uh, Stewart is quite the opposite. He doesn't want to control aspects of play. He wants to give the players the tools to make decisions themselves. And that's why Leinster Rugby plays such an um, attractive brand at the moment. They, you know, they've, they scored a, an outrageous amount of tries. I think it was 140 tries last season. They were averaging over, over four tries a game. They average 26, 27 um, defenders beaten per match. And you're looking at, and you know, this is a team that the 50,000 people here today are turning up to have a great day out of Christmas and all the rest. But they know they're going to see a really exciting brand of rugby as well. And I think Lancaster's passion in delivering that style of play is also really well aligned with where Leinster are at the moment. Do they have a brilliant mix then of, of spending so much time with Schmidt uh, in the Ireland camp and then coming back to La Lancaster and Cullen? And when you think about last week's game and going through 44 f phases with 10 minutes left in the game, like is, is that Joel or is that Lancaster? Uh, I would say that's the players maybe and I often go through this you can't Joe Schmidt's brilliant and he is incredibly intense and very hard on the players because he has an incredibly high standard of the expectation that they'll deliver on everything that they've discussed and that's brilliant but it's very tiring mm. so I think if you're given freedom when you come back to go to your club I mean if you were to play with that, with Joe all the time, and with that level of intensity, like that's hard, you know. And you you do need to take your foot off the pedal a little. You can't be at a hundred percent for every single game you play during the season. And even a change is as good as a rest. I know it's a kind of silly thing, but but I think if you take the like individual personalities within any sporting group, some guys are going to respond well to structure. Some guys are going to respond well to to freedom. Um, and it's never the case where you've got fifteen to twenty players who are all the same. So for for some if you were to look and, and surmise Johnny Sexton looks like he loves structure and he looks like he's very comfortable operational in that system because he can he can implement exactly what he's done Joey Carberry's not that comfortable with all the structure because every time he gets the ball he's probably look he's probably got three things that he feels he could do but it, if he does one or two of them wrong and doesn't implement the structural part of the play, the rest of the team may suffer as a result because they say, well, look, we're not quite sure what he's going to do. But if you're sitting on the outside and you're going, geez, this guy's exciting, Joe might be tearing his hair out, Stuart Lancaster might be round of applause, you know? And then you have someone like Gregor Townsend in Scotland. And I remember having a chat with Gregor last week. He said, Woody, you'd love it. You'd just love training. You'd love to be training with me. And I said, why, Gregor? He said, because there's no structure at all. He said, nobody has any idea what's going on. The ball is thrown in the air. Off you go. I said, no, I actually wouldn't like that quite so much. And I did like the unstructured stuff, but his is totally unstructured. Mm -hmm. So they'll know they'll make mistakes. Their expectation is to make mistakes and to leak things at different times and to, to, because they don't really know what they're doing. But he's now building up a group of players who are all expecting what you've just said. So if Joey Carberry decides to do something, nobody knows it. Actually, the rest of them are expecting the unexpected. So it's it like on that kind of ramp of different styles. Yeah, it's which is why it's really so important today. I mean, this game because Leinster, you know, Leinster is a, is a club that won the one in 2009, won in 2011, 2012. So it's five years since, um, or five years since the uh, won the European Cup, and you know, the expectation in Munster and Leinster is we're going to be genuinely competing and this game today is massive for, for, for Leinster because the season could go at this junction the season could go two ways you win it 
you're going to be odds on favourites to beat Glasgow in the next game. You're going to win the, probably the pool. You go to Montpellier, you could actually get a guaranteeing a home quarter final. You have fifty percent chance then of a of a home semi final, which would be massive for for Leinster. Here. You lose this game today, and the game last week was very close. You know there were incidents. If Sean Cronin had that given a penalty try. Um, when, it, when, it, when, when it wasn't, you know, Exeter could, could have won. And their backs are going to be to the wall today. These are, these are champions of England. It's a proud club. It's really the way they've built up the ethic. And, the, and as Woody knows from his time with Munster, for the big teams to make breakthroughs on the European stages, you've got to go somewhere and win. Your, your victories in France, Leinster going in Toulouse, uh, in Toulouse. And what Exeter will be saying is today is that if we're going to be genuine contenders, we're going to come over here, and they're bringing a report of ten thousand supporters, mm. Mm. Um, you know, to it. And so it's a bit of a different challenge for uh, well, because if good. Leinster lose, if Leinster lose, then the whole thing, Exeter, then take control of the pool, and suddenly the rest of your season, and Leinster has have to be contenders for for the European Cup, gets into get 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 gets into much more doubt. So the good news for Leinster is that they've had that Northampton experience that of, of a few years ago, that the second game completely under Royal, but it's, it could be a really tough game today. I think the bad news for Leinster is Exeter have recent history, so they've gone they've gone and won in Saracens and they've yeah. gone and won in Montpellier. So that exactly. that killer away win at a crucial time of you know the evolution of a great team, they've done it twice. Mm. Yeah. Something lovely about Exeter, actually, and mm-hmm. and where they've come from, and yeah. the ethos that goes behind them, and the fact that they're pretty remote. Well, it seems very much at odds with what we think about when we think of Guinness Premiership teams now. Yeah, and it's also something, there's just something lovely about it, because they all seem to be a little a notch below the top name guys that are there. They've taken like someone like Waldron, who's sitting on the bench, who was in, in Leicester for a long time. He was a good player, and they thought he was going to do very well, and then he didn't do that well, fell out of favour, suddenly he's in. You know, so they've started changing players back in and around. They get an awful lot out of guys that are unloved elsewhere, you know, and that's that sense of team. I was trying to explain it a couple of weeks ago. They lose very few players to international duty. Mm-hmm. And there's two things that happens with that. One is your players tend to be a little bit fresher. Two, international players get injured. Yeah. The level of intensity once you go up to play out here, like even this will be intense today, but it isn't anything compared to um, even South Africa, and they were poor. You know, um, it's just not compared. There's a higher level of intensity with it. it. It exacts a toll on the body. So this is a team that only a couple of guys get drafted into squads from time to time, and they're not. They're just not suffering. They don't suffer at all. So they actually get a break when everybody else is going mm-hmm. to 95, 97 percent of concentration. That is a huge plus yeah. for a team like Exeter, yeah. and it's hard to keep that balance right. And um, and especially when the expectation is every Leinster supporter here is coming today expecting Leinster to win. They'll kind of say, oh, it's going to be tough, it's going to be difficult, but they're kind they're of well, they'll win. And, you know, you, 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 rational, you know, eight times out of ten, seven times out of ten, that, 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 should, that, that could happen. But, you know, you've also got the, some, of the, some of the difficult of these second, you know, Christmas games is that there's a bit of a party atmosphere. A lot of people have sort of come along and, you know, in addition to the hardcore Leinster support, there's people who are making their day out, their Christmas kind of things. And the, the challenge for the Leinster team is to say, this is so important. We've got to be as, as brutal. If we want to be genuine contenders, to win the European Cup, we have to. We will have. To, if we don't beat Exeter at home, we will probably be presented with much tougher fixtures in kind of somebody else's way. Even if you get out of so the. So you pool. can set up your entire season. You by can. You today. can set up. But it's just really the sort of the path of the, the of the, the road of the season could go either way. Just want to touch on your hardcore hardcore support. The fact there'll be forty to fifty thousand people mm-hmm. here. I, I'm. Those days, these days, are still the biggest days in European rugby. By yeah. the way, not you know, not it, like when we look at everything that happens this weekend. This will be the biggest crowd. Mm. Monster last week at twenty-four thousand. That was a really big crowd. You know, on a on a dreadful time at night, eight o'clock, and it was minus one. You know, and it was bloody freezing. You know, and these are huge crowds that are there for for Monster, for Leinster, for for yeah. Connacht, for every Irish one. We're looking to try and maximise whatever it is that we have. We need all those supporters to be hardcore supporters. So it needs to be exciting on the field. You yep. want to get part of the journey. This is one of the things Exeter have at the moment. They're on a bit of a journey. and But this could also be a journey for Leinster. Yeah, Leinster. And this and is their the way on the way back. At the re- uh, it's a very important game. And I think what, what you saw last week, and Andy made the point about Leinster scoring an awful lot of tries. And they have scored a lot of tries, but they play a lot of very easy pro, you know, pro 14 games. 
and the sort of to win the European Cup, it's what you do against the Clermont, Toulon, you know, Exeter as well. And they're still developing uh, in those games the attacking sort of framework of the midfield. Whereas for years it was it was Johnny with Gordon and and, and, and Brian, and even that's what the while ago we're sort of still rebuilding as of our for the national team the midfield combination because that's that's the anchor of your of, of the team. That's where we're in Leinster were at their best. I remember a few a few years ago, and New France as Woody said. Were, you know, periodically give out about French rugby, and there was a sort of a midi Olympic, the big French rugby terms had, had was, was scathing of, of, of French rugby, and I was saying, why can't we play like the All Blacks or Leinster? Uh, and that was that was the sort of the, the, the game. And so Leinster received it was a phenomenal performance last week in the sort of the, the grinding it out, the physicality, the defence, and the organisation. But for Leinster going to be, if they're going to be genuine contenders at the end of the season, we've got to attack, you know, develop this attacking platform that can deliver on the big games, the really big games against the really big teams. Hugo, and that's the, still the in, really in interesting thing there is, is the, how Robbie Henshaw is utilised in the Leinster midfield. He's, he's far more of a playmaker and a distributor that, than he is within the Irish setup. That's just the way he's deployed. Yeah. But uh, Leinster, um, those <laughs> kind of halcyon days with Johnny at 10, Gordon and Brian, you, you arguably had three really really strong, creative mm. playmakers in your midfield. Yeah. You know, without the deployment of Henshaw as a creative guy, mm. Gary Ringrose is more passive in the sense he's a finisher, he receives ball, he can, he can create, but he's not a game-managing creator. So, you know, I'd like to see maybe the likes of Nasiwa, who's albeit on the wing. Dennis Hickey did a lot of stuff towards the tail end of his career. We came off the wing and worked in, into the midfield and brought players into the game. I think Nasiwa has the capacity to do that with the Leinster side, should they lack creativity or... Um, Have you, you seen something this season he, that he'll do that? Yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's a very intelligent player. Yeah, he's going to say, he was like Dougie Howard, he's a very intelligent player and doing the right things. But I, you know, I, I really agree with you. I mean, but Gary Ringrose was a natural centre. He's played all the way up uh, you know, a, a, as centre. Robbie is still learning the position. I remember Gordon Darcy saying it took him four years to actually learn to play centre because it's, I think centre is probably one of the hardest positions on the field to play well. It's, it's relatively easy to play adequately but to play really well because you have such small amounts of space, of time and, 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 the dis and the distribution. And I think Robbie is still learning that both for, both for Ireland and for, and, 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 and for, and, and for Leinster. There's, there's a real skill to that um, Transitions ago, Gordon was a winger fullback, um, and I, I was training obviously at, at ten in, in the days when he was um, wing and fullback, and we used to try and run this quite complex play in training, um, and somebody got knocked down injured, and Gordon was they just said run in at twelve, and it was a loop play, and but he ran it in the first the very first time we ever ran it in training that it worked. He was the guy at twelve, and I remember turning around to him and saying. You should be a 12. And he said, yeah, whatever. You know, it, it didn't even register with him until <laughs> yeah. Gary Ella came in. And Gary yeah. Ella was, you know, one of the only reasons Gary Ella was applauded after his time with Leinster was he was the guy who spotted that Darcy should be in there regularly. So yeah. what you're actually saying uh, is you should get the credit. Yeah, we, <laughs> we all get what he's saying, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to wrap in a couple of minutes uh, to begin our build-up out in the press box ahead of commentary at 3.15. Predictions? I think it'll be very close. Um, I, I, I like the way Exeter play. I thought the game last weekend was fantastic. Yeah. I also thought it was a yellow card. Um, it was a penalty try yeah. for Sean Cronin. Um, the rationale behind that was daft. Yeah. If he tackled him properly, um, he was in a position to tackle him properly, so that was fine. He would have stopped him. That's that's just a very strange sense of yeah. abstract logic. Um, so I think it would have been closer. Uh, I'm For me, as a as a comfortable neutral I'm just looking forward to the game I want to see how Exeter respond I want to see how they're able to function back because Leinster the way Leinster played last week was brilliant but not like Leinster normally play um, I think Leinster only by two or three points as you touched on Hugo like if Exeter can come and win here it brings them to a whole new level yeah. Premiership champions is one thing. Being able to go and win these big games away yeah. from home in Europe makes everybody stand up and take notice. If, if Leinster take that to heart and bring the same intensity that they win they, last week, they'll win. If they don't, they'll lose. Andy, you created the greatest centre partnership in world. <laughs> rugby, so you clearly know what you're talking about. So we'll, you know, you can be, you'll have to be the senior panelist now. Uh, I'd agree with Hugo. I think. Um, oh, you know, the lad is going to be extremely close. I think if Leinster aren't or anything below excellence, they'll lose. 
All right, uh, full commentary coming away at 3.15. Dave McIntyre alongside Keith and Liam Tolan. My thanks, Hugo. Andy, uh, we're here live at Leia Healthcare Box at the Aviva Stadium, uh, the health and wellness partner to Leinster Rugby who are celebrating their new It's Good to Live campaign. Thanks, everybody, who's been here with us this afternoon. Uh, enjoy the game. Hopefully, we do get that Leinster win that sends them well on the way to the knockout stages. We're going to take a very quick break, and then we'll bring you through all the team news for the 3 o'clock kickoffs in the Premier League. Hey, hope you enjoyed that latest offer from Off The Ball. If you want to subscribe, and you should, check out just up here. All our latest stuff is just down here. Generally, knock yourself out.